fantastic. So I'm just going to share my screen now. Okay. So just to reiterate then, uh, my name is William Jones. I'm the Energy Advice Supervisor for Caradicion uh, Citizens Advice. Uh, as you probably are aware, uh, Caradicion is a Western rural county in uh, Wales. Caradicion has particular okay. issues for the, in relation to uh, fuel poverty, in that it is a rural area, so there's a tremendous amount of people who live in Caradigion who are off the main gas grid, so they're reliant upon either electricity to heat their homes, or oil, or LPG, uh, as well as potentially coal and wood, so even before the current crisis in the electricity market, I'm really sorry, I don't seem to be able to uh, move my presentation. So if you bear me a second, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and then start again and hopefully that will work. Many apologies for that. Let's try this one. Okay. Can you see that all okay? I can see Rebecca. So Rebecca can give me a thumbs up if you can see that. Thank you. So I'm going to try and change that. Hopefully that for my end that should change. So just again to give, give you a bit of context, um, the in a place like Caradigion and in other parts of particularly rural Wales, uh, even prior to the current sort of cost of living and energy crisis, there were really high uh, energy costs as a result of the fact that there are so many homes which aren't on the main gas grid. Uh, it, from the last Welsh Government housing survey on fuel poverty in Wales, the two highest percentages of fuel poverty in Wales were in Gwynedd, um, which was first, and Ceredigion was second. So both counties that have fairly similar characteristics in having so many people off the main gas grid. Uh, and obviously, though, this has now been... Uh, greatly uh, exacerbated by the energy crisis that has been hitting uh, the UK and let's be frank other parts of the world since the end of last year uh, which has resulted in huge increases in the price of oil uh, which has the result of not only the people who are reliant on oil to heat their homes but also oil is used a lot as is gas is used a lot which has also gone up in the actual generation of electricity in the power plants of the UK. So that's part of the reason why electricity costs have gone up uh, is because of how electricity can be generated in the UK. The reasons why the price, just to have a context, the pre reasons why prices have gone up for so much of the, the last few months has been a combination of coming out of the pandemic. So there's been a, a in various parts of the world so there's been higher demand by economies for oil uh, and gas and then um, subsequently uh, with the well illegal invasion of Ukraine by uh, the Russian government and the effect that that has had on oil prices around the world uh, so that's some of the reason why there is this particular uh, inflation in uh, electricity and gas costs in the last few months and in oil costs. Um, it, within the UK, the, the United Kingdom in approximately 2017 introduced maximum pricing in the electricity and mains gas through the regulator. The regulator is Ofgem. Um, Ofgem has a price cap which currently is set every six months with new prices coming into effect from the 1st of October and the 1st of April. When the uh, new price cap came in from the 1st of April, there was at that point a 54% increase in the costs that people were facing. And when the new price cap comes into effect in October, which is uh, will be announced in August, there was an expectation that there will be another increase of approximately eight to nine hundred pounds per year. So that the at the moment, I'm sorry to give you all this bad news, but at the moment, the estimate is that for electricity and gas, 
the average cost for heating a domestic home will rise to approximately £2,900 per year uh, up until uh, April 2021 off gems price cap estimate was around the £1,300 margin so it's gone up from approximately £1,300 with an expectation to go up to a to about £2,900 in an 18-month period. Uh, to reiterate the point I made about rural communities earlier on, even before uh, the current uh, pressure on the costs of electricity and gas, because so many people in the rural community don't have access to mains gas, which is historically the cheapest way of heating your home, people in uh, rural communities like Karadikyan were paying between two and three thousand pounds when everybody else was paying twelve hundred pounds so we now see quite often people who are paying who are having projections between four and five thousand pounds if you're heating your home with economy seven etc so there's massive pressure being placed on people with other squeezes in inflation food prices and everything else that people are facing so there's this loads of pressure on people and one final thing i'll say about the price cap is that off gem are consulting on actually uh, changing the price cap so rather than it being every uh, six months it's every three months uh, and if that yeah. happens then uh, prices will go up on the first of october and then there's potential that prices will then go up again in january uh, if that does go ahead although that's not 100 percent guaranteed uh, in in earlier times the way the market would have worked would be that we would assist a lot of people with actually trying to find cheaper deals because there was a competitive market with approximately 60 or 70 companies offering gas and electricity uh, and you could quite often help people uh, I'm really sorry I'm just distracted by the fact that I think Rebecca said earlier on there was monsoon type conditions where she lives the monsoon has reached West Wales it's just quite extraordinary what is happening outside at the moment uh, we may be joined very shortly by a very upset and soggy cat so if that happens uh, my apologies in advance um, so going back to what I was saying was that because the market is so distorted at the moment, you don't have that opportunity to actually do the type of comparisons and save people money that you used to have. At the moment, the cheapest deals on the market are actually the price cap deals and any fixed term deals that are on offer are actually more expensive. And it's all about make it, taking a gamble as to whether if you want to go for a fixed term deal or actually pay more than what you're being charged now on the basis that actually in, in by October that actually might appear to be a really good deal. You know, pay more, have more of a hit now, but by October you might be actually be paying less than what you'll be on the price cap. Anybody who actually managed to fix last year on two year deals before the huge in price increase in um, energy costs, go you because you will be saving yourselves a heck of a lot of money. Uh, but so that's just the overview of all of that. I'm going to move on and hopefully my screen will cooperate. Hurrah. Right. So I'm going to I'm going to briefly go through some of the um, existing schemes that are available to help people with the fuel costs. I'm then going to go through additional schemes that are now being made available by the UK government and then uh, and the Welsh government to ameliorate fuel poverty and the cost of living crisis because the good news is that there's been a lot of developments in the last few weeks and there is actually a lot of help out there and hopefully some of that help will be uh, available to your members and to people who are on this call this evening so so there is some good news so this so for years there have been things called winter fuel payments winter fuel payments are for people of over retirement age uh, they're non-means tested and if you are at the very old in terms of 80 plus and live on your own you can get a payment of up to 300 pounds I think the first one is approximately 150 pounds or 200 pounds but anybody who's on retirement age will get one of these payments and there's a maximum amount of payments for the household so that's been helped there uh, for a number of years cold weather payments are to help people uh, who on means-tested benefits during uh, cold spells. So 
hopefully we won't have a cold spell in June or July, but going back to uh, the period between November and February or the beginning of March, if the weather temperature uh, is consistently below a certain level, it is automatically triggered that people get an extra £25 per week in their means tested benefits like pension credit, universal credit, employment support allowance. Uh, the warm home discount is a rebate from electricity bills that has been running for a number of years. Um, and this year, there are quite major changes to the scheme that's going to take place. So the first change is that the amount of the value of the warm home discount has been increased from £140 to £150. The, the second change is that uh, previously, for people of working age, there was a discretionary scheme, uh, sometimes referred to as the broader scheme. Uh, but this year, the UK government have now introduced a mandatory scheme for people of working age. There always has been a mandatory scheme for people of over retirement age who are on pension credit. So the mandatory scheme for people on pension credit has not changed as long as either the bill payer or the partner of the bill payer gets pension, the main uh, gets pension credit and uh, they are with a supplier who offers the warm home discount. Not all suppliers have to, but lots of them do. Um, and on a date in July, which is normally the second Monday in July, so this year, if it is the second Monday, it'll be the 8th of July, as long as you those three things are happening you will qualify for the warm home discount uh, the dwp do data matching exercises they inform the energy supplier and your energy supplier will advise you you qualify and you'll have a 150 pound rebate to your electricity bill before the end of the financial year if you're a prepayment customer they'll give it to you either by vouchers if you've got an old style prepayment meter and if you've got a smart prepayment meter, they'll put the credit onto your meter. Um, but for now, uh, they're introducing this year a, mandat a second mandatory group, group called Mandatory Group 2 for people of working age. And with that, you have to be on certain means tested benefits. But there was an additional qualification element to do with the data match. Uh, about whether your home is particularly expensive to heat. So although um, lots of people who are on benefits like universal credit, employment support, allowance income-based, uh, income support uh, and job seekers allowance income-based are likely to qualify for this benefit uh, of £150. It can't be said it's absolutely guaranteed. The DWP will issue letters to people in the autumn telling them whether they do qualify or not. And if they do, again, they'll uh, they'll notify DWP will notify the energy supplier, and the person who qualifies will get the one hundred and fifty pounds off their bill, or by vouchers automatically. If they don't, if they get a, if their letter tells them they don't qualify. Um, then I would advise them to seek advice from an organisation like Citizens Advice or, or maybe your colleague Tim with the uh, support that he can offer uh, to see whether or not there's any appeals mechanism or if there are discretionary funds that the person can try and access. Okay. Uh, another scheme that's existing at the moment, which may well be of benefit to your members, is the Priority Services Register. It is a free scheme. It's an additional level of customer service for people who are vulnerable in some way. And vulnerability includes people who've got disabilities, chronic ill health problems. Uh, the Priority Services Register are run by the electricity and gas suppliers do the Cymru and also the network providers of electricity and uh, and of gas, mains gas. So, for example, for, I think for virtually all of Wales, the network provider for gas is Wales and West Utilities. Um, for most of South and a lot of West Wales, the uh, network provider for electricity is Western Power Distribution. And in uh, certainly from the north of Caradigion upwards, it's uh, SP Energy is the network distributor. Uh, to register for the Priority Services Register, as long as you can, if you are digitally included, 
um, it's quite straightforward on websites, including suppliers websites, but also, uh, for example, the Western Power Distribution website, you can register on that, you can tick about, you can click a button and say, giving them consent to share your information with, uh, with the other providers that I've mentioned so that you only have to do a one uh, registration rather than multiple ones. Uh, if you, if any of your um, uh, members have electrical equipment uh, that they need to do with their uh, chronic health problem or disability, it's really important that the uh, network provider knows about that so that if there are any power cuts, if they're having any planned power cuts, uh, that, that they will give uh, earlier uh, notice to the person. And in some situations, uh, if the equipment is a sort of life and death uh, type equipment, like oxygen, for example, they can actually put generators in people's homes to have a continuity of electricity. So it's, it is a really, really good service. Um, they really pride themselves on how good this, this service is. Okay, so please, uh, if you're not already registered, please do register for the free priority services register. Okay, I'm now going to move on to some of the very recent announcements by the UK government to try and ameliorate, uh, make better the cost of living crisis that uh, people are facing. Uh, these announcements were made by the UK Chancellor Rishi Sunak on the 25th of May this year. And as you will see from these figures, there is actually quite a significant amount of money that is that is being targeted at the most vulnerable people uh, in society. So one of the announcements that uh, Sunak made on that date is that from the 1st of October this year, Everybody's. So this is a, this is everybody. It doesn't matter if you're if you're a, a millionaire or if you're on income support or universal credit. Everybody who's got an electricity bill in their name will get a four hundred pounds grant uh, for their uh, towards their bill from the beginning of October twenty twenty two. Okay, so everybody will get that assistance. Uh, if you pay by direct debit, it appears to be the case that there will be a series of, of credits put on your bill over a six month period. If you have a prepayment meter, you will be sent the £400 by vouchers. If you have a prepayment, sorry, if you have a prepayment meter, which is a smart meter, the credit for £400 will be put on your meter. Again, I suspect that will be over a six month period rather than in one hit. Um, but um, obviously this is going to be helpful to everybody. But as I mentioned in earlier remarks, this is going to tie in about the time when there will be a significant increase in everybody's uh, electricity. And if you have mains gas, mains gas charges when the price cap uh, is likely to increase quite significantly from the 1st to October, but everybody will get that £400 help. The UK government also announced a cost of living payment of £650 for people who are on means tested benefits. So means tested benefits being uh, which are paid either by the DWP or by uh, Her Majesty's uh, tax and revenues. So anybody who is receiving universal credit, job seekers allowance income based, employment support allowance income related, uh, income support, pension credit, and then child tax credit or working tax credit, they will receive this £650 payment. The people do not need to apply for it and it will be paid directly into their bank accounts by the DWP or by tax credits. For people who get benefits like pension credit, universal credit, et cetera, et cetera, so not the people who get tax credits, they've announced that the first payment of £326 will be made on or from the 15th of July this year. 
anybody who's on qualifying benefit on the 25th of May will qualify for that first payment of £326. If then there will be a second payment for the balance, i.e. £324, that will be made before the end of the autumn. Although it's not been announced yet, that there is a strong likelihood that there'll be another qualification date. So, for example, it might be anybody who's on universal credit, job seekers allowance, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, on the 1st of September will qualify for the second payment of £324, which again then will be made before the end of uh, the autumn. Uh, if somebody's just made a claim for universal credit, which hasn't been decided by the 25th of May, but when it is decided, it does take them to, it is awarded from the 25th of May, but the decision says it's made until now, today, the 30th of June, they will still qualify for that first payment of £326. So this is obviously considerable help for a, a lot of people within uh within Wales, uh, England, Scotland and Northern Ireland who will receive these payments uh, and they won't, they, they won't, they are additional payments, they won't, you won't lose out on any other benefits because you're getting that assistance, so that's uh, ex extraordinarily helpful. If you're on tax credits, uh, the payments are going to be made, the first payment is going to be made in the the autumn and the second payment was going to be made before the end of the winter so it's going to be slightly later for people who are on the tax credits but they will get that 650 pounds in addition to the cost of living 650 pounds payment there is a disability cost of living payment of 150 pounds okay so that is anybody who is on uh, disability living allowance disability living allowance for children attendance allowance or personal independence payments will qualify for this 150 pounds. Now, I, I can imagine that there may well be many uh, of uh, people uh, who have MS who may be on uh, PIP, attendance allowance, et cetera. So you, the people who are on that benefit will qualify. And if you've got, say, if you had a couple and both people are on PIP, there will be two that each person, it's each person will qualify for £150. Those payments are going to be made in September, the £150. Again, nobody has to apply. The payments are going to be made directly into somebody's uh, bank account because the DWP will already hold that information. Um, additionally, this year as a one-off, again, these are all, these are all one-off things for this year, and this year as a one-off, the winter fuel payment, there will be, I've mentioned there's a winter fuel payment, which is a non-means-tested uh, payment uh, for people of over retirement age. There will be an additional £300 payment this year on top of what somebody would normally qualify for, and that's uh, capped for the whole household. So, for example, if you, if, I had a, a, a client this week who has who is for the first time going to get a winter fuel payment. So they're going to get £200 as being the standard winter fuel payment, and they're going to get an additional £300 uh, this year. So they're going to get £500, plus they're going to get the £150 because of the person was on PIP, plus they're on a means-tested benefit, so they're going to get the £650. And there were other members of that person's household who were also on uh, PIP. So they were going to get the £150 as well. Plus, they're going to get the £400 grant. The other thing which I haven't put on here, um, I don't think I have when I get to the Welsh version. I'll mention it in a moment when I get to the Welsh version. So as you can see, there is a tremendous amount of very recently announced support that the UK government are, are going to give to people um, in this year and, uh, and clearly the targeting is of the most vulnerable from the point of view of income uh, and also the most vulnerable in the point of view of disability and age and the people therefore who are probably spending more time at home and at more going to have higher costs plus also though um, you know, there's this tragic thing of excess winter deaths due to fuel poverty. 
so it, it, it kind of reduces the I suppose it reduces the risk that people may decide not to put their heating on because they can't afford it and therefore uh, the risk to their health and adverse outcomes because of that so that that's how they targeted this I'm going to move on to the some of the Welsh government things I didn't include this I will mention it though again uh, that as you probably aware the Welsh government as well as the things I'm going to talk about here uh, on this uh, presentation they've also got a 500 pound uh, grant to people who get carers allowance uh, who are unpaid carers uh, that 500 pound grant has to be applied to uh, for from the person's local authority and that's got to be done by the 15th of July uh, so that date is getting quite close now so if you um, have anybody who you know or members of this group who are carers uh, and they get carers allowance, they can apply for that grant from their local authority. There's information on the Welsh Government website and there should be information on all the local authority websites in Wales about this. So I'm going to go through then some all the things that are happening in Wales funded by the Welsh Government, in addition to what we've just talked about in terms of what the UK Government are doing to try and assist with the cost of living crisis. So the Welsh Government have had a cost of living payment of £150, which hopefully, um, if you qualify for this, you've already received it. Unfortunately, in the area I live, still not everyone has received that £150. Uh, to qualify for the £150, you have to be a council taxpayer and you're in a home that's got band A to D or you're uh, a council taxpayer and you get council tax reduction and it's in any band uh, if you get council tax reduction so uh, and that's 150 pounds uh, which as I say hopefully most people have already had it but there definitely are some people who still haven't had it um, and if you think you qualify and you haven't had it yet please please check you with your local council uh, to make sure that you're not missing out on that £150. Uh, the Welsh Government have announced a discretionary fund for, uh, in addition to this £150 uh, a fund, which local authorities will be able to administer in Wales. Uh, again, in, in uh, this is then meant to be additional help people can get with uh, predominantly uh, issues about heating uh, and energy uh, and it may be for example that somebody who's in band E on a low-ish income but not actually getting council tax reduction they might want to apply for this discretionary fund to try and get some assistance to help with the cost of living crisis. Uh, information about how the discretionary fund works in each area should be on the local authorities websites the Welsh Government have very recently announced a new heat fund that's going to take place in Wales uh, from, they hope, uh, be, will be up and running by the autumn. Uh, it's a partnership between the Welsh Government, which will be funding uh, the money involved uh, with an organisation called the Fuel Bank Foundation. And the heat fund will have two elements to it. One element is fuel vouchers for prepayment customers who are struggling to top up or are at risk of disconnection because they can't top up. And the second element of it will be an additional fund available to help people who are struggling to buy oil, LPG, wood, coal, etc. Um, and there will be a uh, fund to assist people uh, with that as well uh, the it's so far there's limited information has been released uh, but as I mentioned a few moments ago they hope this will be up and running uh, from the autumn and it's really unclear as it as it stands today 
whether or not people would apply directly to the heat fund or whether they would have to be uh, referrals through an organization like Citizens Advice or um, other partners to do the referral. Uh, the Welsh Government last winter had a uh, scheme called the Winter Fuel Support Scheme, which gave grants of £200 to help people with their energy bills last winter. It was administered by local authorities and people could apply between the middle of December and the end of February. This was a scheme for people of working age last year and you had to be on means tested benefits and you had to have an electricity and or gas bill, mains gas bill in your name. Uh, the Welsh Government, before all the announcements by the UK Government, had committed to this scheme running again this winter. It is definitely going to run again this winter because it was in a meeting on Monday where it was said it's definitely running. The eligibility this year has not actually been confirmed yet, but uh, so it'll be interesting to see whether or not they keep it to people just of working age or whether they will expand it in some way. For example, uh, last year, people who live in um, in park homes where you get billed for your actual electricity use by the site owners were ineligible. So one of the things we've lobbied about is that because people living in park homes is a big thing in rural areas like Caradigion, is that uh, people who are, uh, are park homeowners who meet the other eligibility criteria as long as they can show they have got an electricity bill if it's to the park home management company that they should be able to qualify for it as well so as you can see between the welsh government and the uk government there is quite a lot of assistance there's um uh, other programs in wales that can assist people again funded by the welsh government uh, there is the discretionary assistance fund uh since to 2021, the Welsh Government have originally run a pilot and now they've got a more longer term programme where people can get help, can get grants with oil uh, up to this year. It's a maximum also this this iteration of the scheme, which came in in October last year and which is now running to the end of March 2023. For oil, it's £250 as a one off grant. Uh, you can only get one grant in a 12-month period and it's a rolling 12-month period from when you got the, the first payment of, for, of £250. And for LPG, where it's bottled LPG, you can get three grants in a 12-month rolling period of £70 each. If somebody has an LPG tank, it's treated the same as oil, so you can get one payment of £250. Um, through the DAF scheme as well, uh, you can uh, you can apply for help uh, for emergency funding to help you top up prepayment meters. In relation to the applications for oil and LPG, that application has to be made by a partner organisation like Caradigion Citizens Advice and anybody else who's a partner organisation. Uh, and for, for the emergency help for prepayment. Uh, the person it can be an application through an organization like the organization I work for, but it can also be an application made directly by the uh, client or the member of the public. Okay. So but these we help, we've helped a lot of people uh, with these oil grants. And it, you know, uh, when we started doing this last October, 250 pounds could buy you most of 500 litres. Whereas now to get 500 litres of oil, which is quite often the lowest amount a company will sell oil at, uh, it can be between 500 and 600 pounds. So uh, there's been this huge inflation in the last uh, last six months. It, and at one point, although it seems to be eased now, there was for about a, a month or so, was, there was also a real supply issue. It wasn't just the costs were going up. Actually, people had to wait weeks before they had a delivery, although that seems to have, uh, have has improved. Okay. Um, other things that can help people, grants available uh, all across Wales, there is the Welsh Government funded NEST scheme, which is currently, it has been running for a number of years, and the current uh, NEST scheme is definitely running to March next year. It 
uh, their free grants for people who are either, either owner occupiers or private tenants. Uh, there are sort of two eligibility uh, in terms of income. Uh, you can either be on a means tested benefit or you're on a low income, not on a means tested benefit, but you, you have certain health conditions. Uh, the When you make an application for NEST, they will make an assessment to determine whether your home is hard to heat or not. If you meet all the criteria and your home is hard to, hard to heat, and if you're a private tenant, your landlord has also agreed to the works being carried out, uh, they will carry out uh, free works at your home, which could include new boilers, new radiators, new uh, insulation, additional insulation. If they are putting in oil somewhere or putting in a new oil boiler, they can on occasion as well uh, put some oil in the tank. So um, it's a it's a great scheme and it's helped thousands of households in Wales over the last 11 years or so. Uh, there's also another ways that people can get grants across Wales. There's something called energy company obligations, uh, ECO, ECO. Uh, in some areas like Caradigion, but not all parts of Wales, as well as the general eco scheme, local authorities have got the ability to set their own rules, which is you get this horrible jargon called EcoFlex LA. So Flex is, is flexible, LA is local authority, so that they can increase the amount of households in an area who could potentially qualify for uh, eco funding. So if you have uh, households that, or, or if you've got members or people on this call who think they won't qualify for NEST, but it's still worth pursuing either with your local authority uh, or through uh, contractors who do eco work, whether or not somebody could qualify for some help with eco to make your home more energy efficient and hopefully mean that you are having to spend less on energy. Uh, and in addition, some other things that we will do with energy advice are there are some trust funds available for people who've got debts uh, and we can assist people with grants to try and clear debts. Uh, you person would have to have had regulated debt advice uh, before that can happen. Uh, and also organisations like Citizens Advice quite often have access either directly themselves or through third party referrals to fuel vouchers so that people who are um, who are struggling to top up prepayment meters uh, and are at risk of self disconnection, we can assist people with fuel vouchers. We just had a funding uh, scheme that came to an end in the month of June where we were able to distribute £35,000 worth of fuel vouchers to people in Caradigion. Uh, to assist them uh, through the uh, energy crisis uh, in this last six month period. And we have a continuing scheme that we can refer to uh, for, for to help people who are in that kind of emergency situation. I've probably talked far too much. I've gone over my time, uh, but just to reiterate in terms of what we can offer, uh, and it, it, obviously, if you do live in Caradigion or in the Caradigion area and you want one to one appointments with us, uh, that's great. Lots of citizens advice also do throughout Wales have energy advisors and are able to offer energy advice. Uh, we will always, in, at least in Caradigion, when we offer energy advice, we do it holistically uh, because obviously, if we can increase people's income in the sort of ways Tim was talking about earlier on, if we can identify that people should get higher levels of universal credit, if they should be getting disability benefits that they're not getting at the moment, if we can assist them with any of that, that's going to build up longer term resilience to be able to uh, afford energy and everything else over the longer term. Um, reducing outgoings, we will always look at everything you can reduce outgoings on, you know, for example, if you want certain means tested benefits, you can with certain companies get subsidised and much cheaper um, broadband and things like that. So sometimes we're able to assist people in reducing their outgoings on things like broadband by about 30, 40 pounds a month. Uh, we do uh, not mentioned in this, but uh, one of the things that 
we're all trained to do uh we deliver energy advice are where uh, we can verify uh welsh water applications for social tariffs etc for welsh water have got help you and another tariff called water shore wales so we can assist people in accessing that and that can sometimes save people to between two and four hundred pounds a year uh, all our energy advisors have not only uh, are qualified under internal citizens advice training programs to deliver energy advice, but we've all also got a city and guilds, uh, what's called level three qualification energy efficiency advice as well. So we will always look at can we help people in terms of are they using energy in an inefficient way in their home? Could they potentially be using energy in a more efficient way, which would be better for them, better for the environment, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but obviously lots of people are. And, it, you know, it's just it's just about affordability. And lots of people are obviously underheating their homes because they can't afford it. There so many people are faced with the dilemma of heating or eating or uh, heating and buying something essential for their kids, whatever it might be. Um, so the energy efficiency advice, although can be useful for some people, it, it's really touched. I don't think it really touches the surface at the moment because it, it's more really about people just are probably underheating more than anything else. Just to repeat myself, I think I am done. I am. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen. I'm going to thank you all very much for listening uh, to me for the last Let's see how long I've been banging on for, probably about half an hour, 25 minutes. And have you got any questions, any comments? Please, please, please uh, ask away. And thank you very much. The only thing I would say is that I know we've had members quite often try to get hold of the Citizens Advice Bureau by us. And I don't know whether it's just our area, but it's really hard to actually make an appointment to get the money. And if, if you've got an appointment, if you're lucky enough to get an appointment, it's weeks and weeks before you can get that appointment. But it just might be our area. Where do you live, Val? Uh, I live in, uh, well, I, I have to say Rill because I live in Rutland, but there's uh, it, the main town is Rill. Um, and, and I will say it's a, it's a nightmare to actually try and make an appointment for them. Oh, okay. But it might it's just be our area. Is that Conwy? Is that? Uh, no, Denbyshire. 